City, you, uh, Madam Clerk, you want to read that? You have to retrain me. I would be me. glad to. Thank you. First item on your agenda is approval of City Council minutes for the regular meeting of April 20th. Move approval. Support. Moved approval and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item two is bid awards. Awarded bid for Wayne Road deceleration lane and City Hall exit drive widening project to be paid from DDA funding. So move acceptance of Polo Construction 36,200. Sorry. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Third item is business licenses and permits. A, application for ice cream vendor's license for the driver, Wanda Jean Mulhern. Move approval, Mr. Rick. Support. Moved approval and support. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Application for ice cream vendor's license for the vehicle owned by Jumbo Ice Cream. So move, move approval. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Renewal of license to operate junkyard at 34939 Brush Street, LNL Recycling. So, so moved. Move. And moved. Part supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Renewal of license to operate four mechanical or electronic amusement devices at John's Place. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. You can operate now, John. <laughs> Renewal, of one Glenwood, but, uh. <laughs> Renewal of license to operate three mechanical or electronic amusement devices at 7-Eleven. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Renewal of license to operate five mechanical or electronic amusement devices at the Wayne Moose Lounge. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Communications and reports, I'm sorry, comments from persons in the audience on matters not covered by the council agenda. Any comments from, yes. Could you please do something about the dogs? Could, could you state your name and your uh, address for the... Oh. Betty Ria, 35008 Richard. We have a problem with people with loose dogs all the time. And they just... In that area? Yes, around particularly around the park, okay. and the same ones all the time, never on a leash. Is it any time of the day in particular, or just all? Particularly about 4.30 to, you know, on. When, when our, they come home from work, they walk their dog and let them. <coughs> when our animal control officer is off duty? Right, <laughs> right, of course. 
Are the uh, are the owners of the dogs with them? They're just not walking in oh, with yeah, the leash. Yeah. Well, they're not I leashed. yelled at one today because the dog was going on my bushes. <laughs> But we may have to have some selective enforcement down there with the, some different hours. We'll have the police chief uh, look into that. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Betty. Uh, Nancy Pride at 35246 Courier. I have a list here. I haven't been here for a while, but it won't take too long. Um, I'm wondering what's going on with the restaurant. I know it says it's closed for remodeling, but I haven't seen any more crews or anything else going on around there. Um, the library space, now that I've seen your model out here, is very nice. Um, I figured out which way it was running. I thought it was going to run back of the, uh, and back up against the uh, white elephant, but it's not. Um, <clears throat> is there anything, I saw in the paper something about or heard about the uh, fire department deciding to move to the south side of town. Is that true or false? If so, I don't want it moved. I don't think we need to be spending that kind of money. Um, and I think, in, in conjunction with your idea, I think new homeowners, since we have a, a, a wide variety and a lot of them in Wayne, since there's a lot of homes being sold in Wayne, they need to have a portfolio or something that comes out of the city department on building codes and things, how to get to different things, the rules on dogs. Our neighbor that just moved in across the street from us lets their dogs out of the yard, wandering all over the place. Um, and I don't think they realize that there are rules and regulations that need to be followed. Uh, we have a neighbor that's in our, in our neighborhood who consistently walks his dog with no leash, um, and it chased a little girl up on the porch, and he found that very hysterically funny. Um, I also want to know what the fire department or the police department is going to do about children on rollerblades and rolling across intersections. Very dangerous. I don't think it, it needs to be addressed. I don't mind if they're on sidewalks, but when they roll across Wayne Road, um, it's dangerous. And <clears throat> how about the houses on the, it's the north side of Forest that there's a whole row by the railroad tracks that do not have paved streets. Is there a reason why they're allowed not to have paved streets? They're all dirt streets. Where, where are you talking about? North side of Forest, <coughs> that would be east of Second Street. That'll be like you know, third, fourth. Oh, yeah, okay. All of those. I said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got all those. So that's quite a menu. We start with item one. <coughs> item number one: roses. Uh, the building, the uh, the owner of the business has got the building for sale. Uh, doesn't sell it within a required period of time, he will lose it. To the person from whom he bought it. Uh, it was under remodeling, but that is no longer the case. The signs just have not been removed. Uh, but it is for sale, and it will not reopen until it is sold or reverts <coughs> reverts back to uh, the owner. Um, in this case, the, the Malley Corporation. Uh, relative to the library, um, I'm not certain if you had a question about the library. If you would make your comment that you liked it. Uh, regarding the fire department, there is some discussion about um, that has been going on for some time amongst the city council and the administration about the need for new buildings for police and fire. Fire hall is goes dates back to the 50s, as does the police building. Uh, many things have changed over the past 40 some years since those buildings were constructed relative to codes. Um, codes for exhaust, for instance, in the fire hall. A fire hall today, if it's built, has a much, a very sophisticated <coughs> exhaust system so that the vehicles can be started inside the building and it can, the exhaust can be vented. Uh, there are a number of other deficiencies about the fire hall. There are some as well relative to the police building. And there has, as I said, been conversation for a few years now about the need for new building a new building for the two of them or separate new buildings. There's been some discussion over the years about relocation of the facility to more southerly where it would be more central in terms of the, uh, the way in which the people in Wayne, um, the homes are, are spread around. If you look where the station is now on the north side of town, that was put there when it was Wayne Nankin Fire Department and serviced Westland at that time. That's the reason it's the Today we service the city of Wayne. Three quarters of our population lives south of the tracks. If you were to just a normal layperson can look at this city in the map and where would you want that 
station to be to shorten your response time. <coughs> response time in fires and health is critical. Minutes yes. is, is life. Well, so if you, if you, if you move it down into this area or here, more central, then you're more equally uh, distri distribution to the community. If it was off of Michigan Avenue, I would I would find that okay, but mm -hmm. you're, you're probably going <coughs> to find that some people may not, since there are so many homes in that area, uh, may in one respect want to have it there because it's so close, but being close doesn't mean that, it's, that you're going to be able to have your house saved in a minute. Um, <coughs> but again, the point is is that it's under discussion. It's there, under review. There is no there has been no proposal made by the administration uh, to the council as to where it should be located. We have been merely talking about it. We have, uh, in 1984, 85, when we launched the city center master plan, our first priorities were the court and the library on the city hall, the development of the park, the development along the river. And um, there's been a, re a renovation project more recently to the community center. Um, the DPW was relocated from Myrtle Street to Clinton, excuse me, to Forest and Wayne Road. The building department was taken from the old city hall and put in with DPW at Wayne and Forest. So um, the city staff are always looking at the ways in which we can better serve the public. And again, no commitments have been made. I didn't happen to see the article of which you spoke but there's, it's no secret, we have been talking about it for three or four years now, and at a recent council meeting there was some discussion about method in which it might be financed, maybe through the sale of bonds, maybe through grants from the federal government, um, et cetera. And so um, in order for us to do um, our job, we need to keep the council informed of these matters, and uh, they have questions from time to time about being able to deliver emergency services to the public and uh, that's that's where that's been well, coming I, from. I'm, I'm kind of concerned about the noise factor. <coughs> probably the people up in the area that have had to listen to the fire department all those years. It is noisy and I think that it's probably being moved because of the noise factor. No, that wasn't even a fact. No, that's not. Not at all. <coughs> and when they run on the road, anybody in the city of Wayne is going to hear those sirens. No, I know, but it's from the main base from where it takes off, that is a constant noise that you're not going to get rid of. Oh, yeah. To be frank with you, I know that the, I, I, as I live in the North End, I, know I live do. on the corner of Elm and Second, and I can hear the fire trucks rolling and, and the emergency squads rolling. And uh, I work for the city, so when I hear them rolling, whether I was an assistant manager or the community development director or the city manager, it makes me think of Wayne and Michael Bryan and the firemen and where are they headed, and I hope everything comes out okay. So I don't think of it in terms of the noise. It just t sets me to thinking about the fact that we're out helping people which is what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, but there, there really has not been, and you're sitting with people from the North End and South End and East End and West End, there has not been a hue and cry um, in the community about noise. Um, and uh, that is not a consideration. We were merely looking at the fact that the, uh, that the police building is deficient in certain areas. The communication specialists work in extremely cramped quarters. There are many things that they must be able to see and access from their workstation, those are the people that dispatch the firemen and the policemen uh, to the various places. So the whole unit's going to be moved. Have to go. Fire. That's under discussion. It's under discussion. Um, the jail spaces that we have are, are inadequate in today's up to today's codes. Um, again, we need an additional area for um, uh, in, in the police uh, uh, building. As I said, the police building was built in the 50s. The second story was added to it in the 70s. Um, the, uh, the needs of the police department continue to change just as the court needs change and the city hall needs change, the public works department needs change. Fire halls in the same way. They are in a situation where their building no longer meets the kind of needs that we have today in this sophisticated world of firefighting. Um, 30, 40 years ago, you did not have the kind of fires that you have today. Chemical fires, um, toxic um, resins, and, and other things of this sort involved. Now, our firemen are extremely, um, are, are spent a great deal of time training. Uh, we now have a cable dish behind the fire hall so they can receive classes via cable. Um, it is difficult for them to, uh, to have some area to in which to work within the building because their living quarters and their studying quarters are the same quarters, uh, the same room. It's difficult for them. They have no room in which to meet. They must meet in the same room where they're trying to study or where they're trying to uh, do other things. 
Um, the building is not that large. Um, so this is the kind of things that the staff thinks about. The fire chief would be remiss if he didn't. The police chief similarly. The library director similarly. Uh, they, they think about these things. They bring them to the council. They bring them to the staff. We talk about them. We realize we can't afford everything, just like you. We can't afford to buy everything we want. So we have to do these in stages. And that's been the, the <coughs> process of this city for many years, is to it do just, things. It seems like we just got through doing the courthouse over in a tunnel underneath so the prisoners don't have to be far outside and walk No, there's across. no tunnel. There's tunnel. There is no tunnel, ma'am. No tunnel. We go I out the back. they were going to put a tunnel No, in. no, no. There, there's no, no. There's no there is a basement to the court, but there is no basement in the police building. So the jail cells on the police building are on the, on the ground floor, the main floor. There's a second floor, but there is no need for a tunnel. They go out the back of the police building and they go into the side entrance of the court. There's a holding cell <coughs> in the court. The old court did not have a holding cell. Um, the old court lacked many things. Um, going on to your other question about city codes and the way in which to address new residents. That's a good comment. Um, we've talked about that from time to time. Um, some years ago, before I came to work for Wayne, I believe Wayne had a welcome wagon. Um, and that was not run by the city. I believe it was run by various social organizations in the city. Maybe they were run by service clubs as a way of introducing themselves to new residents. Um, there, we do not have a definitive list of people that move into town. Um, so if they come in and register to vote, uh, or they come in and they announce to us that the name on the tax roll needs to be changed from Smith to Jones or from Baker to Lewis, um, we are acquainted with the fact that we have a new resident. We don't really have a search system wherein we can uh, identify that we have new residents in which we could send out a packet to. We she try to accomplish we, we try to accomplish that through this through mailing out annually of our calendar. The calendar contains information about the city services, about the city budget, <coughs> about the boards and commissions. Um, and But your comment about um, people that are unaware of ordinances, such as leash laws for dogs, um, other laws, is, is well made. And we will review that further. Um, the issue about rollerblades, I'm, I'm, to be frank with you, I don't know what to say about rollerblades. Um, the police chief is here, and he can comment uh, about that. It's my impression that rollerblades, roller skates, skateboarders belong on the sidewalk. Uh, they do not belong in the street. They have to cross streets from time to time, and I don't think it's probably practical for them to take their rollerblades off, cross the street, and put them back on. But if, if we could hold that one till the end, I'll defer that to the police chief, and he can maybe help me on that. Relative to the houses on Forest Street that, have no, that do not have paved streets, there are about two miles of streets in Wayne that aren't paved in the northeast section of town, Woodbrook subdivision, and some of the small streets called Dearborn, Filbert, Cadillac, et cetera. Treadwell isn't paved. Whitney Knoll subdivision isn't paved. Louis Savage subdivision not, is not paved. And then there are some other streets like 3rd, 4th, et cetera, uh, north of Forest Street that are not paved. Uh, the longstanding policy of the city is that when the residents of that street want the street paved, they petition the city council to have it paved, and they accept the cost of that. And then the street is maintained by the city. It needs to be patched or repaired, uh, or, or it needs to be plowed or salted or swept. The city takes it over. Along the way, the development of Woodbrook or Louis Savage subdivision or Whitney Knoll, the subdivision developer and those homeowners elected not to pave their streets. And the city has not forced the issue of paving recently. A few years back, that was an issue, several years ago now. Um, but if the residents of 3rd Street, north of Forest, would like their street paid, the policy would be for them to petition the city council, have greater than 50% of the property owners involved that wish to have it paid, and the council would approve it. We would do it. They would pay us back through a special assessment district. And so far, as I said, those residents have not come forward and said we'd like our street, the streets paid. Uh, Mr. Colligan, could you help me with rollerbladers crossing the intersections? Well, rollerbladers are just like people that were on skateboards and went through this issue a couple of years ago that were causing some problems. They do have some specific responsibilities in how they cross intersections, streets, etc., as do pedestrians, bicyclists, mm -hmm. or anything like that. The problem is enforcement. Uh, <coughs> we see them, you know, in violation of the, of the traffic codes and statutes. There, we are able to write tickets. Most of them are juveniles, uh, and those tickets are down center, rough, whatever happens down there. 
we don't know. Uh, but we have a lot of kids in those places. They do create a hazard, and when we see them in violation, our guys will stop them in the right. If you would call, if you would call, or Mrs. Pride, excuse me, Mrs. Rhea, if you would call when there are people that are letting their dogs run loose in the park or um, that kind of thing, if you would call the police, regardless of time of day. The animal control officer does work a set schedule, but he works <coughs> at the pleasure, I shouldn't say that exactly, he works for the police chief. Um, he has certain rights and rules as an employee of the city, not like I work at the pleasure of the council. Um, but if you would call the police, regardless of time of day, um, if he's working, he's on duty or he's off duty, uh, if you have a complaint about an ordinance violation, call the police, explain the, the complaint, they'll dispatch a car. And uh, if you know the person's name and uh, you know where they live, um, they can, if they're not able to get to it right away and see the person with their dog, th they can dispatch a car later in the day to that person's home and indicate that there's been a complaint about them walking their dog without a leash. In many cases, as Ms. Price pointed out, the residents don't know that you have to have a leash while you're walking your dog. Um, some of them don't want to, some of them are unaware of it, um, some of them forgot it. But I think if you warn them or ask them, please don't do this anymore, it's offensive to your neighbors, um, and they, uh, most of them will stop. They'll, they'll buy the leash or use the leash. If they continue, then the police, of course, can write a violation for violating the, the ordinance. And if the dog is running free, um, the dog will be picked up. Our animal control officer, very, very good. Have they ever thought of having, a, for lack of a better word, a pooper scooper long? Yes. <laughs> it's tried in New York. So many people, you wouldn't believe, mm -hmm. walk their dogs in the park. They won't let them do it at home, you know. Or right on and, our, and our kids are, you know, supposed to play in that. To be frank with you, I'm not certain. Maybe the chief can help with that. There's none of those laws that I'm aware of on the books in Michigan. The city of uh, London, England has a following the footpath ordinance. So maybe we can talk to our brothers in the uh, merry old England and uh, get the following the footpath language. So it is on the books in London. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's a heck of a one to enforce. Oh, I know, but some of those are like elephants. <laughs> yeah, if you, walk, if you walk an elephant in this town, you also must have a leash. <laughs> yeah. I want to direct this to our attorney, I believe. What is the specific requirement for rollerbladers crossing streets? Quite frankly, I don't know what the specific requirement would be other than they have to act prudently as if they were pedestrian. Okay. I'm not aware so of that the does specific not, requirement does that, does that, that says specific? a rollerblader is treated different than a pedestrian. All right. To address Nancy's question, that right now on the on the books, they just have to act prudently in crossing the street. They don't have to take their rollerblades off. Correct. Roller skates, skateboards, same way. Right. People don't. Walk across I, I'm not expecting them to, you know. If I send them a whole hockey team, you know, rollerblades and that, I got my rollerblades. I just wanted to clarify that so that we didn't have any misunderstanding coming out of the meeting because when I you know heard the response they're supposed to do what the law says and I can't even remember what the law says that's why I asked for clarification but there was the the other day it almost got hit and came along okay and then he with the steeler he went right across the I, I, underst I understand the concern but I just wanted to clarify what the roller blades what the people wearing rollerblades what their responsibility is under the law we have um, through the recreation department we have attempted to create areas for skateboarders rollerbladers roller skaters um, to play to exercise to have fun uh, where in which they would not encounter cars um, we've developed the path system along the south side of the route right. We've developed the path system through Atwood Park. Um, we've improved the parking there and the lighting. Um, we can't, in, in many cases, we can't get them to, to use those facilities. They are told by their parents to skate around their house or nearby so they can be observed by their parents. Um, as the city attorney indicated, uh, it's the usual um, perspective of life of trying to act prudently. And uh, I'm sure there's been many walker, jogger, bicycle rider, etc., that has been watched carefully as they've crossed the road and they've had a near-miss situation and worse. 
But we will review the issue about a way in which to disseminate information about building permits that you spoke of and other codes so that new residents or old residents that maybe need a refresher can be informed. Any other comments from the audience? Yes, Scott Press, I live on Glenwood. I'd like to return to the fire issue, more specifically the funding. Within your discussions, Mr. Zeck, I was wondering if at all has been raised the possibility of placing this on the ballot as an initiative for the city residents to say yes or no. And two, do you have a contingency plan to place before the council of a renovation of these buildings versus building brand new buildings? We have not even done the study yet. We've been merely talking about the fact that in the not too distant future, that's the thing that we need to begin to focus our attention and energies toward. We have discussed all the options of funding, one of which would be to ask the voters if they would like a new police or fire building or both through a referendum. That has been discussed amongst the staff. And then thirdly, I was wondering if the police chief can shed a little light about the conditions along Glenwood since you have a city of Wyden in which the speeds are 25 miles an hour, but we experience people probably doing 30, 35, 40 miles an hour through that area. And I was wondering if patrols or radars can set up there more frequently than they have been in the past, or if there's a plan to do that. Specifically from the tracks to Elizabeth, I think people were Wyden, they start really getting going and they forget what they're doing. And there isn't another side street to pull our lane, so they begin to pick up speed and we notice, and I'm not the only one in that area, but speeds are considerable and we have a lot of children in there that are concerned about. We haven't noticed, or it hasn't come to our attention, Mr. Press, quite frankly, to be raised at night, but we haven't noticed any increase in accidents in that area. But we'd be more than happy to set radar cars down there to check, and we do that periodically. Really, the new construction on Glenwood is from the tracks going west to Newburgh, and when people come eastbound over the tracks, a substantial distance past the tracks, they really allow parking in front. So we haven't experienced any increase in accidents on the road, but we'd be more than happy to stick a radar car down there and check the speed. Well, because I know there was, I think, last year a study done, and I think one of the council members, or Brian Amon, or someone had requested a study along Glenwood with traffic, amounts of traffic at different times, and I had heard discussions about that, but I don't know if it was ever continued or ever put in place. Mr. Amon raised a question on speeders in his subdivision, I believe, on Hillcrest Drive, and we put a radar car out there, and quite frankly, we wrote some radar tickets to the residents on Hillcrest Drive for speeding in the neighborhood. The traffic study of which you're speaking was initiated by Mr. Bach relative to the traffic in the area of Schweitzer School at the time in which parents either drop off or pick up students at Schweitzer School, and there was some discussion about where parking should be allowed and not allowed, and standing should be allowed and not allowed in speed. But we'll look at that matter and report to the council. Yeah, because I believe if you look at the arteries there with Palmer, Glenwood, and then Michigan, a lot of people are trying to avoid that Michigan turnaround down by the plant, so they're taking Glenwood. Only a few times, and the railroad usually deters them from coming that way. Right, but what I'm getting at is now that it's been widened, we are experiencing more substantial speeds in that area. I'm sure they'll take a look at that. I appreciate you bringing that up, Mr. Scott. I commute down Glenwood every day at 7 a.m., and I would turn at 3.34 o'clock, and three days out of five, there is a Wayne police car somewhere in that commute on one of the side streets, somewhere in the very area you're talking about, watching that very issue you're watching. So they're doing it, again, being on that street every day, going to and from Wayne Memorial High School. They're out there, and I suspect many tickets have been issued in that area. Cut that out, Kathy. 
their cameras are getting used to them, so they may make a few noises every now. Light off the small stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't they have a camera face so they can see the people that you can behind you're talking instead of in the top of your head? <laughs> 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 they get them both ways. You can't get away from them. <laughs> Any other comments from the audience? <laughs> okay. Madam Clerk? <clears throat> there are two communications and reports before you. The first is the Wayne Coin Club letter in appreciation of auxiliary police <coughs> assistance. Okay, we another fine job by the auxiliary. They do a good job from the city of Wayne, different events. And this, you've uh, passed this on to the auxiliary? Yes, sir. Okay, received the file. Second letter is from Councilwoman McEckern relative to the planting of four global relief trees at Sir Optimus Park. That's good, Donna. And uh, I see some of the other ones we've planted are starting to blossom. They're looking good out there. <coughs> All right. The next section on your agenda is general items for consideration. 5A, State Highway Maintenance Contract for the period of 1992 through 1995. So move approval. Support. Moved approval and support. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Make sure they change the <coughs> Change. The state's a little behind. Yeah. Yeah. They've got Frank is still the director and still on Myrtle Street. No, okay. That's how come we have difficulty getting into the road. Carried. All right. Item 5B, ballot language for two proposed city charter amendments. Mr. Mayor and members of the city council, um, in your packet, item 5B is a memorandum from the city attorney to me regarding those uh, two proposals that we've discussed on many occasions. I think the memorandum speaks for itself for the fact that um, we are, there is a process by which you must go through to get language approved for charter amendments, um, and that includes a, an approval by the governor, the attorney general, and so he has uh, moved forward on those. At your place tonight is an, an amended version of the uh, of that memo, which, uh, corrected a couple of typographical errors, and also at your place tonight are the efforts of the committee that you established last fall, um, to which there were seven members, one that was um, recommended by each member of the council and appointed by the council as a whole. Um, today we received from the chairman, Mr. Butler, the, uh, the committee's final report we put it at your place. We realized you couldn't possibly have time to, to read it with a little bit of uh, um, early uh, warning on this this afternoon. So what we'd like to do is give this to you today. We'll return it to the agenda uh, for your consideration on the 18th of May at our next uh, regular meeting. And, uh, and hopefully we can have some discussion about it at that time if you're ready to do that. But we would like you to look at um, the revised version of 5B and uh, if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to recommend any changes uh, relative to this language, uh, we would appreciate it. Okay, we'll re review that for the May 18th meeting. Uh, would you look at the amended version of 5B from Mr. Clark okay. now, if you could, sir? 5B? Uh, yes. And Dick, you want to pick it up from here? The, the only change from what their packet had, uh, Mr. Zek, is the January 1st, 1993 date in the proposed uh, charter amendment for 19.18b. The other two were just typographical errors that we corrected, but the bulk of their packet came, it contained the efforts of the committee. It was our understanding that the council, because these uh, involved benefits to employees, uh, that there was some need to push ahead with these since it has to be submitted to the governor and the attorney general's office to receive approvals relative to the language before action could be taken. Uh, we thought it prudent to get this before you as soon as possible, as it may take some time to to conjure up the language for the other items that ultimately you may or may not suggest that we do after you view the uh, committee's uh, report in its totality. Okay, so the corrected uh, items before so you're ready for action this evening. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so I'll move for approval. It's been Support. moved. Supported. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Carried. And we'll address the others and yes yes 
Mr. Mayor and members of the council, just by way of clarification, I might just add the comment that both of those amendments are in, contained in the report of the Charter Advisory Committee, and they're simply exercised as a, the attorney has uh, suggested for purposes of action this evening, but they are contained in the committee's report. Very good. Okay. Mr. Mayor, just one little interruption for a second. The little noise you heard a moment ago was part of the camera slipped off its, uh, its uh, base. And the, the young man that just came in and adjusted it is uh, our consultant from Comcast. It won't hurt us again. And, uh, uh, <laughs> that's why the camera stopped panning back and forth on the audience. Uh, have we paid the bill yet? We missed Councilman Dickerson. We'll try again later. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm glad I'm sitting over here. Yeah. I went and seen uh, the bodyguard at the State Theater last night, so the camera. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we're still experimenting with this, and, uh, and we will, until uh, we get it right, we'll continue to work on it. Our, our, our loyal technicians are, are working hard and practicing with it, and uh, hope to uh, be ready to go on the air soon. Good. Item 5C is weed list A. So move approval. So far. Moved and supported weed list. You say A? Weed list A. Weed list A. a. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. 5D, statewide ballot proposal A. Okay, Mr. City Manager, you gonna, are you ready for this one? Everybody yep. tucked in. We're going to get the full, full blast here on the uh, proposal. You want yes. to start kick it off? Yes, I do, and uh, we'll get the involvement of... Uh, Mr. Norwood and Mr. Rothfeld and Mr. Clark on this and uh, try and answer these questions and then those later on in the agenda about how this will all impact on the uh, very, very important will impact on the proposed city budget and proposed 93-94 millage rate. The uh, news has been dominated lately, at least the uh, news out of Lansing it seems, with the discussion about Proposal A. Um, the governor has given it an, a nickname or an acronym in which he calls it STAR program, which stands for Schools and Taxpayers Agenda for Reform. Most people still refer to it as Proposal A, and that's, I think, what I will do for purposes of, of trying to uh, uh, not confuse people. Um, the Proposal A involves many changes, uh, principally <coughs> to the way in which um, schools are financed. Um, there is a decrease in dependence upon the property tax for schools and an increase in terms of funding from the state through, uh, if approved on June 2nd, by a increase in the state sales tax, which affects not only residents and businesses, but tourists that are visiting Michigan from out of state. Um, the, the shift, therefore, would be away from the property tax and toward a uh, state sales tax increase. Uh, there are some changes that would affect the city uh, of Wayne government in terms of revenues. There is a, an assessment cap at 5% or the rate of inflation or whichever is less if this is approved. This is the legislature and the governor's response to the request from citizens for some relief in the area of um, double-digit increases in assessments because property values have increased and people that are living on a fixed income or a relatively fixed income have experienced a situation where the property has gone up in value faster than their income has gone up and they have been complaining that they're unable to maintain the home in the way in which they'd like to um, because their um, their taxes are, are going up faster than they can afford. Um, this uh, change in, in procedure will create some difficulties for the city. But in short, the, um, the staff's feeling is that there are some very good things to Proposal A, and there are some things that are not so good. This is a political matter. Uh, we all have a, a right and a duty and obligation as citizens to learn the, about the proposal and make our own decision on June the 2nd. But we have prepared for you uh, a number of documents at your places tonight uh, that we gave to you on Friday that cover a number of things. Now, a number of the staff, as well as the City Council, have been attending seminars <laughs> and meetings about this matter. And uh, we thought it would be best that there be some discussion about it by the Council 
And if you wish to take a position on the matter, you can. If you wish not to, that's your uh, prerogative as well. And uh, we would then uh, go forward. But we have tried to, in this package, uh, give you our analysis of uh, what's good and what's not so good about Proposal A. And uh, if I could turn it over to Tom Norwood and, and uh, Ed Rothfelder now, they've got a couple of comments to make about the various aspects of the, of the proposal. And then I'm sure we'll drag Mr. Clark into this too. Tom, um, you going to start it off? It. You have to look at this proposal from an all-around point of view. If you look at it strictly from our city point of view in the first year alone, we have problems. This is the cap side of this issue, which is going to keep down the si size of assessment increases. It's going to limit our revenues in the first year, right from the get-go. The amount that we get from the administration fee, because the school tax amount will reduce. We charge a 1% administration fee based on other amounts that we collect. If you look at that alone, that'll cost us money as well. And beyond that, if we try and maintain our downtown development progression as we have in the past at about $2 million, to do that, instead of receiving $3 for every $1 we put into the downtown development authority to the TIPA, that will reduce to $2 for every dollar we put in. It will increase our share if we want to continue a $2 million tip the next year like we're trying to do, like we're proposing right now in the budget. And we'll see that next week. When you wrap all those things together, if we continued the $2 million tip and kept going, our decrease in amount of revenue available to us would be some $466,000 in the general fund alone. That's a big pill to swallow. Now, that just happens in year one. But further, if we go down the road, the assessment cap, any time that our costs increase more than we can charge and based on our taxes through assessment increases or whatever, any time those costs exceed that, slowly and surely, local government in the city of Wayne will have to cut back. And that's something serious to consider. It's one of the few places that you're going to have an artificial cap put on things that no other government level of government has in the state of Michigan. So that's something to consider as well. But to try and show you a specific, um, I had a... Uh, Bottom of page one of the memo, isn't it? Yeah. I had a little uh, page in your handout that looks something like this. I had a slide maybe for the audience so they can see possibly what is going on with tax rate increases. Try to show, first of all, what this millage rate decrease will mean in the city of Wayne. <coughs> so, uh, Wayne Westland Schools right now levy 47 mills for operations. They also levy three mills per day, but that doesn't get affected. And this is the one thing that's going to be hit by the new tax proposal uh, should pass. They will be allowed to levy as best we can tell exactly 27 mills to start with. They'll be able to do that until their foundation millage expires in 1995. I think that's the date for that. At that time, they'll have to be removed. Normally, that, uh, in most school districts will all be allowed to charge 18 mills. Only some will be able to charge in excess of that, and that'll be up to the 9 mills to get to the 27. <coughs> Last year, we levied 80 mills. If all our other millages stayed the same, that would decrease the total to 60 mills, a decrease of 20 mills strictly from that one decrease alone. That's the cut that we're talking about. That's clear to everybody that I'm trying to go on from there. But in, in effect, our tax millages is for all we the have other some things that change as well. But that that is really what the cut is talking about. That decrease in millage from 47 mil down to 27. First, let's make it clear that as of July 1, 1993, the operating millage for Wayne Westland is not 47.1236. In fact, it's more closer to 40 mills due to the rejection of a millage issue. So the net, the actual net decrease, if proposal A would pass, because again, it's approximately six 
well, 7.75 mills have already come off the levy due to a defeat of a millage issue. That's correct. Proposal A, I, mean, I want to make sure people understand, Proposal A, as we sit now, will save the taxpayers approximately 13 mills, not 20 mills, because there's been some literally property <coughs> tax reform already occurred with the defeat of that millage. Uh, secondly, I'm not sure I understood Mr. Rothfelter. I want to make sure the people understand that the actual <coughs> limit is 18 mills, and people will be able to vote on the difference between 18 and 27. As you say, in 1995, at that point, that nine mills is the only property tax issue, millage issue, if proposal A passes, that, that the voters in the state will be able to deal with. They have an option of approving anywhere from one to nine mills. The absolute cap is 27 mills. Uh, I'm not sure everybody understood that. Well, that's, that's a very technical point. The, the point I'm trying to make for anybody who paid taxes last year, they would have paid at this rate, and anything the governor considers in all his savings and everything else, all the things he talks about, he goes from a millage like this to, to the new millage here and skips over those little subtleties that are very important. Seven mills are very important very people important. of this town. But uh, if you paid taxes last year, your change would be the full 20 mills if, uh, if this would have passed. And there will be adjustments to these villages as well, but I didn't want to get into that side of it. But basically, those will stay fairly close to the same. We'll talk about that some more later. But the basic idea that I want you to get from this slide is that, off, Ed, is that what you're saying there? about the existing law, Headley, and other factors may affect the 93 millages. Sure. Is those, th that, those three areas are right. Now, and if proposal A passes, <coughs> that's going to change the whole game. We don't know what will happen here with proposal A passes. We do in our case, but we don't know for other units. Uh, but the these will drop if proposal A doesn't pass. So this is a fair comparison if proposal A passes. It's comparing 82 to 83 with proposal A. And 92, I'm sorry. Okay, the other side of this that I tried to show see if we can get that up, is what happens to our general fund. Can everybody see that? I tried to show two things. Basically, we have about effective millage between general um, and valorum millages, which are the what most of us pay, and the Act 198 millages, which various companies pay that have some tax abate. We have about $388 million worth of SEV. This is equivalent to SEV, that's uh, what we can charge on our taxes. If the full delay passes because of the cap, that's going to be cut back to approximately $375 million, not just an estimate at this point. I don't have an accurate figure for that. That will be a decrease of some $13 million. That's what the cap side of things does. Our millage rate, if we're limited by Headley, is about 17.21 mills for the general fund. It would be 17.40 if Headley didn't affect things. So on the current millages, we would be able to raise $6.7 million. Proposal A would reduce this to $6.5 million. That's the decrease of $200,000 that I talked about earlier. The administration fee that we charge right now is about $248,000. That would decrease to approximately $156,000. That would be nearly another $100,000. That would lose $92,000 on top of it. So without the, the Downtown Development Authority, we would have a loss of nearly $300,000 before we start going anywhere. Yes. It, I think it's, it's important also to point out that $92,000 <coughs> administrative fee reduction represents what nine million two hundred thousand dollars in less property tax being paid in the sit for the citizens of Wayne and Westland. Am I correct on that? That's true, yeah. So again, I mean it's it's a fee that represents significant tax savings in the community. Second of all, I really question the the notion that we can in fact we're building in a half a million dollar loss here, Mr. Rothfelder. Quite honestly, we do not have to uh, put in your figure of 174,000 where we put in 430,000 into the TIFA capture. 
That does not have to go up to 604,000. What we're, what you're putting in there is you want to have the equal dollars, the you same amount of dollars you're taken out. That, that I mean, uh, well, I'm not so sure that you're showing that the, pass, the passage of Proposal A represents a net loss of almost a half a million dollars to the city of Wayne. And quite honestly, I don't. The the hundred seventy four thousand dollars I can't agree is in fact a net loss in revenue, because this body sitting here will decide how much of the general fund we will put into that. That could be. You got ahead of my presentation, sir, but that is true. The these things, the two hundred thousand dollars, the ninety two thousand dollars, we have no choice on it. Sure, I understand that. This hundred seventy four thousand dollars, this council can control. That is true, but the choice to control that means that we either. Do not do things in the downtown right. development uh, right. district, or we postpone exactly. them for a very long time. And our, well, point, our point is, is, uh, is what we were trying to do is we set the assumptions below here and explain what our assumptions were. If we wanted to say um, our assumption would be that we lower the that would alter that tip of capture line. Yeah, this is based sure. on two million dollar tip. Which is what we've been talking about. Mr. Manager, I do not want people to go away from this meeting assuming the passage of proposal A is going to cost this city a half a million dollars. That is not correct. That is that's true. Okay, well I just want to make sure in the proposal that we're right. we're we're making sure that's understood. But on the other hand, in trying to make it clear to council what their options are and all the things involved. That is a very salient point because it means definitely that we're going to have to give something up. Exactly. The fact that we might have to prolong certain DDA projects, not necessarily for a very long time, but for, you know, be more prudent with our DDA money is something we certainly have to consider here. We'll just change what we, what we work with. That's these, these losses are only in terms of year one, but they can occur in every year after that where we have additional caps. But they for, may or may not happen after this, but they do happen here. For the life. clarification, the way I think we, you, at the point is well taken, I think we ought to indicate 292000 would be the total loss, depending on what we do with TIP. So we're looking at approximately 300000 would be the real. 300000 is the minimum. Yeah, minimum. minimum. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what we do with TIP, it would go up. For Certainly, if we had proposed to you a $3 billion TIP budget, it would be even larger. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we were not, we're not attempting to, to shape this one way or the other. We're merely talking about the typical tip of budget has been $2 million um, since the second year of the program, in year number four. We're going to propose $2 million this year. The is on the ballot, and that will change things. Again, we're not attempting to try and shape this to be either Staff telling you that we're for, or the staff telling you that we're against proposal A. We're merely trying to put out in front of you for you to decide what the council's position is on the council's matter. And uh, certainly, all of these assumptions can be changed. And uh, uh, we're not, again, we're not attempting to try and change the proposal A or that. We're really just trying to, to bring some. some Assumptions to you, and you can tell us if those assumptions are what you want. Know. There are certain things we can change, and certain things we can't. The cap that lowers SEV for any one year not only lowers it this year, it lowers it forever in the future until a house is sold. That's an absolute. The, uh, the loss here, if you don't like it in the general fund, and you say we're going to reduce the tip of capture, we'll just take four hundred and thirty thousand dollars on the general fund. Certainly the effect of the general fund will be uh, no loss here. That's true. But on the other hand, we're going to give up that full increment, whatever that calculates out to when we consider the two for one dollars. In that case, would be about uh, the total of $250,000 almost. But let's call it $500,000 for talking purposes. That would be a reduction to the DDA. And that reduction becomes forever. because it, and, you, the only way to go through the pain of raising the DDA after that would be to give it up in some future. So it's not only something that's given away this year, the $500,000 could be a reduction in your DDA, but you have a, a $500,000 less in the DDA as long as you can capture the dollars. And that, that becomes a limiting factor in the future as well as this year. So, and well, where you say you've got to, to work with that, that is true. But we're really giving something up not only for now, but in the future as well. And by that logic, we're giving up $4 million a year, are we not? 
because we have a maximum capture of approximately six million dollars out of the DDA. If my Correct. Numbers are right. I mean, that's not a logical thing to look at. I mean, we've given up four million dollars a year for several years this because. No, my point to you would be because we, this group and preceding groups have decided to capture or have a DDA budget of $2 million, we have chosen not to capture over previous years historically $4 million. That money is in fact lost to us. So it's, I mean, I'm not so sure that argument makes any sense in terms of, I'm, I understand, I mean, I think the point should be made that this proposal will in fact uh, look at a, a, a goose that lays Lots of golden eggs out there in an EDA that it changes from one dollar gets three to one dollar gets two. That's the point that this group has to be very cognizant of, and that in fact it cuts about a third of our DDA money. But I, I'm, I'm just trying to make the point. It's a very important uh, point to be Something that you need to consider sure. in terms of your being for or against proposal A. And and this, this is just looking at our, our effect here. It's not looking at the overall. I tried to do that in the rest of the memo and look at some of the other things. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience at this point on any of that? I think, again, one last time, the administrative fee of $92,000 reduction, people should be aware <coughs> that's the fee that this city gets as a revenue for collecting taxes for the way the schools that represents a tax saving to people of 9.2 million bucks a property tax saving that that's sure. chunk of money good chunk of money that people have in their pockets people in business I think and we business, have to sure. the business part of it but they uh, if you look at this overall the next slide that I put in your packet was one that tried to look at some of the I think I'm going to cut the size of this down a little bit I tried to look at various people and see how this would affect Wayne taxpayers. And in all the comparisons that I made, several things happened to people. The first thing that happens is the millage cut, the 20 mil decrease saves people money. The assessment cap in year one saves people money. And the comparison I'm doing here is on a full year comparison once everything goes into effect, which according to the analysis that came from Lansing was done on a July to next June basis. And that assessment cap enters in there. However, everybody that gets a homestead property tax credit, as long as you're not over the limit, as long as you're within the uh, area there, as soon as you have uh, and all these people in this income range are not over the limit, they would receive some benefit from it. You're going to lose something on your homestead property tax credit. And you have a sales tax increase. And last but not least, if you're itemizing on your federal tax return, which from this analysis we assume that people over $30,000 would itemize people under $30,000 just take the standard deduction, you would have a possible tax effect there. In all the cases we looked at, for a $15,000 income from a family, or $25,000, $40,000, $50,000 income, similar homes, the amount in the every case, everybody had a slight tax benefit on the whole. On the other hand, when we look at the same income levels and similar houses for a senior citizen, those people ended up in Wayne always paying taxes in excess of what they had before. And the reason was, that on a dollar for dollar basis they lose all the all their homestead property tax credits. Now, you know, there may be individual circumstances that will vary from this, but these are some basic examples that I tried to pick out to show this. And it was very strange. I hadn't expected it. So from some things I've seen from other communities, there were some uh, clear winners in the upper income groups, but I guess we don't have on the whole too many people that reached the sort of incomes where there were tremendous benefits to it. In areas that had uh, large homes, very large homes and large uh, incomes they came out ahead because on the whole those type of people don't spend as much for sales taxes people in our tax practice do. So that was just a, an interesting uh, So the loser on this as you're displaying right now is the uh, the seniors. seniors. In Wayne I would say that would be true. I, I don't think it's true in every community. But uh, and the reason being is we you get such a uh, loss of your homestead property tax credit is the reason that now, one thing I didn't calculate here was, uh, or show a slide on, 
but I tried to calculate in my mind what this uh, effect this had for business. And business comes out a clear winner on this whole thing. You get a property tax deduction, but you have to pay more on your federal income tax, which for most, for large businesses, would be at a 34% tax rate. And you lose a little bit on your uh, single business tax because, uh, again, property taxes are deductible there. You have about a 36% loss of any uh, reduction in the property tax. But you're always going to come out about two thirds of that. So for every dollar you can save on property taxes, you can keep about 66 cents of the cost, so 64 cents of the cost. And that's a good deal for businesses all the way around. Now, when you were talking about the property tax savings and the uh, uh, the savings of administrative fees and other things, we have one taxpayer in Wayne that would be the primary benefactor of all those dollars. He's, and he's not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question there? Does, um, okay. the, uh, if the tax increase, does that go on food or does it still stay off of food? No, it's off food. It's off food. food. Okay. food and, and prescriptions. Okay. Our, our sales tax on the whole is generally considered a very fair sales tax. The way it is now. The way it is today, yes. Yeah. Oh, one thing I do need to mention that is, as is still we have not heard anything about the assessment freeze that's been kept off to date, but that bill is still floating around as far as we know. And we checked on that, I believe, yesterday. I don't remember the last time we actually checked. It was, it was still floating around in the committee last week. The assessment freeze, to the best of our knowledge, despite the fact that the governor continues to talk about it, has not been adopted yet, has not been uh, put on the floor, has not been passed yet. And it won't be. Not, and it never will see the light of day. There until after we, would hope, back. we would hope that if that thing passes, there's no question in my mind that we should be flat out opposed to this issue. Rothfeld, there are sources in Lansing of giving us assurances, 100% assurances. If Proposal A passes, that freeze will never see the light of day. Well, I'm concerned. If it Along with a few other things. There are maybe some people. <laughs> yes, Councilman Phil. Oh. I uh, ran for election for the first time a year and a half ago. Along with some of my colleagues here, and in a lot of meetings in a lot of places around town, the number one question asked me was, our taxes are too high. What are you going to do about our taxes? What is going to happen to taxes? The second question <coughs> was, what are we going to do about the downtown area and why we can't buy shoes downtown? But that was, uh, a group in Lansing has finally, I think, come up with a proposal that does something about property tax uh, in this state. Uh, I think it's important that people realize that we are one of the high property tax states in the country. And we are also one of the lowest sales tax states in the country. I believe of all states levying a sales tax, the 4% is, is the lowest in the country, tied with several other uh, states. Uh, one of the problems we have in economic development in this state and a general overall development of the state is that too, we, this state relies entirely too much on property tax and has entirely too low a sales tax. It's, I've sat here before, we've sat many a time, talking about what kind of taxes are fair. Property taxes are the most regressive type of tax that any government can levy. I have a neighbor who is being taxed out of her house, is going to have to sell her house. My next door neighbor, two doors down from where Scott's folks live, is going to have to sell her house. The last original resident of my neighborhood because of property tax being entirely too high and it's based not upon her ability to pay, it's based upon her, her house. And at one time, there was an income in that family that supported that house. This time, on a pension with a, a significantly reduced income, there's a problem. We are having people in this town and this state being taxed out of their house. As we look at a sales tax, sales tax is based upon an ability to pay. It's a consumption tax. It's fair in this state, as Mr. Rothfelder said, because we eliminate two very, very vital things, sales tax on food and sales tax on prescription drugs. It is not the most progressive tax. It is not the tax <coughs> I would like to see in this state. But right now, when we're talking about in this town, in this state, 
property tax reform. This is the only game in town, and this is the only game that's going to be played <coughs> in the state for a long time. I cannot see any other course of action, but hopefully this body will support this. I, you know, I kind of straddle the fence on this. I make my living in my, my day job in public schools. The public schools are not hog wild about this program. It's going to, in fact, seriously diminish outlying years' finances. People always ask me, what the heck happened to the money in the lottery? Some very important parts of this uh, proposal also should be pointed out. It guarantees certain things by the Constitution of this state that all dollars will, in fact, go to from the lottery and from the current funding levels of schools. Will the, the people in Lansing won't be able to run a shell game as they did on the lottery funds. Uh, it, it, municipal governments are going to have to run a little meaner, a little leaner. Public schools are going to have to run a little leaner and meaner. County governments are going to have to do the same. Nobody is very happy with this program, but if you look simply at what Mr. Rothfelder put up, in this area, $9.2 million of property tax back in the pockets of the taxpayer to be replaced by a two cent increase in a sales tax. I think it's, it's time that we do a, a tax shift in the state. And I, for one, uh, I'd like to see a proposal. I mean, I've got these pie in the sky dreams of what a proposal should be. And this isn't it. But it's a proposal that, in effect, can pe keep people in their homes. We can address the number one issue, I think, that's been in the state of Michigan in taxation for years, that of a regressive property tax. And I, for one, like to see this body support uh, Proposal A, because I think it is, in fact, a fair and equitable shifting of taxes from property to a more equitable way of taxation, that of consumption. So I'll move that this council support the STAR Proposal A on January 7th. Part been moved and supported uh, further discussion I, I uh, would like to make a couple comments on this also the I had some concerns uh, in three areas the senior citizen uh, effect uh, was one of my initial concerns I'm a little bit uh, uh, less concerned after reading the information here about uh, 150,000 senior citizen homeowners 30 percent of the senior households claiming a credit who received the maximum homestead property tax credit. STAR will provide additional property tax relief. And by holding down assessments in the future, it will remove a reason why seniors must often leave their homes, as the case you mentioned. So that kind of flipped me back the other way on, on uh, concern about the seniors. I think they took it away here, but I think they are going to definitely benefit on the other side. Uh, the economy, uh, of course, in Michigan is a big concern of all of us. and. Uh, I think this should be a beneficial effect uh, to the economy, hopefully. And uh, the one major concern I hope that they'll address later uh, is the in the tax abatements that we currently have. Uh, that program with this big tax abatement that business is going to get, I believe we should end tax abatements. Uh, that's But that could come after the fact. Uh, the impact on our government, as Ed said, I think we're all going to have to tighten the belts. Uh, I uh, agree that it's going to be tough to live uh, with even less than uh, the rate of inflation in future years. But uh, at those times, I think we can go to the people. If we have a program that we can present to them and the people want to support it, I think they will. If they don't, well, then we don't need to provide it for them anyway. So I, th I agree. I think we should uh, support it, even if it's I'm reluctant in some areas. But I think it's the best we're going to get out of Lansing. Any other uh, comments or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Here. This is the time I'd like to move your proposal to make a motion and have the council go on record again against the tax abatements and to ask the governor and our representatives and senators <coughs> to proceed with legislation to uh, end the tax abatements in the state of Michigan. Or Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Any other comments? Uh, Shirley. If, if 
Proposal A passes on June 2nd. The assessments that were just done, did they get thrown out? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank God. Is <laughs> that a not a fact? I, it's not exactly true. Oh. No. The be done. Uh, assessments will stay as part of your permanent record. And if your house sells, future increases on those assessments will be what your new tax is based on. If your assessment increased 3% or less, and some did in Wayne, those will be your assessments. You received a reduction from the Board of Review that brought you below a 3% level. Those will be your assessments. The only assessments that will change are those that were greater than 3%. That was the majority so, of them in Wayne. That, that's the majority, but it's, it wasn't, that's not entirely true statement. That's right. all I'm trying to say. Yeah, there's a little different categories right, in the different areas. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk. Item 5E, change order number 1, CTI and Associates contract for additional soil testing services at Gowdy Park Amphitheater. $2,744.89 from DDA funding. Move approval. Move to approval. Support. Question. Mr. Phillips. Ms. Fans, when was this work done? This uh, soil barring and so on. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, the work was conducted by CTI and Associates during the months of June and July of 1992. Why? I mean, they just found out they no, actually, ran over budget now after six, eight, nine months, whatever just... No, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, um, the city received a bill for the additional services in October of 1992. As I indicated in my note to you, though, the services for which the bill was received was over and above what the company was contracted to do. As part of the contract with CTI, we defined the scope of services that they were to provide, the, tech, the, the staff, um, grade at which those tests should be performed by and the rate of pay which we indicated that we would pay them for the, those services. When they provided the additional testing services, they deviated from that. Um, they performed tests that weren't in the normal scope of testing that we were requesting. They had higher grades of technicians performing the tests than what we felt were necessary. And, and so we've spent, of course, the last six months since their billing um, working with them so that we could bring a proposal before you in which the staff could recommend approval. This is a reduction from their initial yes, position. Is, okay. <laughs> it's about a quarter of what they uh, initially built. Very good. Been moved and supported. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Item 5F. Professional Services Agreement with Jarrett Mills Schroen for engineering work in the Central Business District parking lot number two, not to exceed three thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars DDA funding. Move approval. Moved approval. Support. Support. A discussion. It didn't. Uh, the Goodfellow Auction. Didn't we have a uh, uh, services thing that we, the City of Wayne, bought at that time during the Goodfellow Auction? Uh, Mr. Mayor, during the Goodfellows auction, it's true that there was um, some professional services that were auctioned, but those were offered by Cliff Snyder of Snyder, Zantner, and Peters firm. Cliff Snyder? Yes, okay. and those, those were for architectural services. We'll use those later. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed? Carried. Item 5G, one-year agreement with Associated Newspapers for legal notice publication at the rate of 567 per column inch. Mr. City Manager, <coughs> make a comment on the, uh, as you can see from the brief, the publisher of Associated Newspapers uh, expressed some uh, mis apologies about a misunderstanding the rate uh, that they wish us to uh, consider. It's 567 per column inch. We're currently paying 574. We've never had a contract with them before. Um, many of the communities in which they work with do. They can't figure out exactly why a contract was never offered to the city. It may be because there were competing newspapers in 
other towns where they publish and uh, it may that may not be the reason but um, they would like to ask you to approve a, an, a, an agreement of 567 for a year which would in, result in the seven cents per column inch reduction in our current legal advertising fee. and this is equivalent to other communities yes yeah. right, right. The city of westland is a, it pays 567 and so they have approval contract. been moved supported right. discussion Mr. Bill? I'd like to thank Ms. Pauser for bringing this to our attention two meetings ago, not only it's a seven cent reduction from our current rate, but weren't they recommending a higher rate? Yeah. And yeah. That yeah. Is a significant reduction. Thank you, Ms. Pauser. Thank you, Shirley. Madam Clerk? Oh, did we vote on that? I don't believe so. Okay, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Madam Clerk? 5H, recommendation to adopt tentative 93 millage rate and revise May 18th public hearing time on the proposed budget and millage rate from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the uh, second part of our request is, is an easy one. I, uh, somehow in the course of the conversation at the last meeting, because the county had not provided us with some information that we needed, uh, we were not able to um, give you some very important information that you need um, in order to call a public hearing. And uh, we were, we had on your agenda calling the hearing for May 4th, namely tonight. And, and at your places, we asked you if you would amend that to be May 18th. Somehow in the conversation, uh, we, we locked out of the time at 7 o'clock. And in fact, <coughs> we um, have that meeting at uh, 8 o'clock. Yeah, that public hearing at 8 o'clock was May particular reason to begin it early uh, that night. So if you would um, change your time from uh, 7 to 8, we'd appreciate it. Um, more importantly, however, is the, uh, is the overall discussion about the proposed budget and uh, proposed millage rate. As you know, next Monday night at 7 o'clock, we will begin with you the review of the proposed budget. Uh, we passed out to you at your last meeting. The uh, um, comments earlier tonight uh, along the lines of what will happen if Proposal A passes in June 2 have serious implications as we've noted uh, to you uh, about, our, about our budget process. Our proposed budget has been prepared um, because we were about 80% done with this preparation um, from the standpoint of without thinking about the, um, the effect of Proposal A. If Proposal A passes, we will then uh, come back to you in June with an amendment to the, to the proposed budget. By charter, you must, um, in order to follow it, you must adopt the budget at the second meeting in May. So uh, if Proposal A passes, we will need to make some adjustments to its revenues as well as to some of the expenses. Uh, setting that aside for, for the moment, the uh, millage rate that we proposed of 19.25 is um, 0.29 mills lower than last year. At your places tonight is a millage history of the city dating back to 1986. Mr. Norwood and Mr. Rothbilder are going to uh, go into that in some detail. But I'd like just to tell you that the millage rate that we're proposing is a little bit complicated and they'll run through it. The millage rate we're proposing is lower than last year by 0.29 mills and specifically it is lower than the millage rate of 1986 uh, which was 19.66 and we're recommending to be 19.25 so uh, with that we have a short presentation to make to you about the proposed millage rate how you get there the effective headley the truth and taxation laws and all of that which um, may make uh, um, you a little uh, anxious relative to some of the things that we have to do. But there are two additional pieces at your, at your place. Um, and, uh, and, um, we're going to get a copy of that. Ed, did you not pass the vote I was going to pass them out with presentation, sir. I didn't oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought they were in place. Here they come They're now. They're place. <laughs> here they come now. And uh, Tom and Ed, take it from here. We have an opportunity tonight to explain how a tax millage decrease 
is going to be advertised as a tax millage increase. <laughs> Good luck. First thing we want to do briefly is. <laughs> Only in Michigan we can have this fun. <laughs> now, okay. Basically, the, the basic concept we're going to be working tonight for the purposes of the notice itself is a very simple one. The state of Michigan wants us to tell the taxpayers, and we want to tell the taxpayers, when we need additional dollars because of inflation to pay our additional costs. Nothing stays the same from year to year, and, and it, a dollar today is going to be worth less next year because of inflation. They want us to tell the taxpayers what it is we're doing. Going through this stuff gets a little bit complicated, so I'd like everybody to follow this through to begin with, and if there are questions when I get done, I'll be glad to go back to any part. You are giving a test when you complete There are going to be a test, yes. Okay, and if everybody understands this, we can all make money afterwards explaining that. Okay, from the beginning, I want to just show the, the military that Mr. Zek was talking about there, and I'm having a little problem here trying to balance this up so we can get that a little more level. Back in 1986, we had three militaries, uh, four militaries in the main charge tank, plus the CHA for general fund millage of 17.95. Our student total was 19.66 mil. In 1992, that same millage. Ed, uh, could you grab the pointer there? Right next to you, Ed. It's right on top. Of okay. That same millage is 19.25 mil. So we're talking about a decrease from uh, the first time in the last seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years that we were going to be below that millage rate. Our millage last year was 19.54 mils. But we had reduced it one tenth. We had reduced it one tenth of a, or one one hundredth of a mil last year. We're proposing to take it down additionally to 19.25 this year. And that's just a brief history of what's going on. The high that. point to lower you. Got to leave that back up one more second. The high point of millage in Wayne was in 1987, you got it. where it got up to 20.99, yeah. or roughly speaking, 21 mils. Since 1987, the administration has recommended, and the council has approved, lower millages all the way along to the point now that we're proposing to you a millage that is below 1986. Now the tricky part comes where Ed's going to talk about the fact <coughs> we have to advertise this, however, from the perspective that it's an increase. Well, we're, we're going to get to quite a few steps before we get to that point. The other thing that Ed's going to talk about, which has never happened before, <laughs> is that we're faced with a heavy rollback for the first time. Did you guys ever work in Lansing? You've never really been presented with all the details on because of the heavy rollback. We've never had a heavy limitation. And the only reason we're having one this year is because two years of assessment increases are being compared to one year of inflation. Mm -hmm. All right, Ed, I'll stop. We'll get into that. <laughs> Clear as mud. <much. laughs> More specifically, last year we charged 1954. This year we're recommending the 19.25 millage. What we'll be really be recommending is 14.53 mils on our base charter operating millage, which is 0.47 less. Our retirement or pension millage will be at 0.96 compared to <coughs> one mil last year, and that will be a reduction of four tenths of a mil, et cetera, down the line. When we get done, our operating millage that we're proposing is 18.66 mils compared to 18.90 last year, a reduction of 0.24 mils. Don't lose sight of the fact that we're reducing this millage in everything we do. But to talk about dollars from one year to another, we're going to be going on to something else in just a minute. At the same time, our debt millage drops off slightly from 0.64 mills to 0.59 mills under the existing tax law, so we'll reduce that five one hundredths of a mill. Total reduction, 0.29 mills. Okay. Now let's Now this part is where we start getting into some things that are a little bit new that we've only talked about in various parts <coughs> before. But there are three calculations you're going to see in this worksheet. One is for headway, one is for truth and assessing, and one is for truth and taxation. The truth and taxation is the one that's going to give us a few problems in a minute. But let's start with the headway calculation to begin with. Talk about that 
and then we're going to see how that's going to affect the actual millages that we're allowed to charge in the next slide. Our state equalized value in 1992, and here we're talking about general ad valorem taxes only. This doesn't include things that are under abatement. And the calculation is made for this purpose. The city of Wayne is unusual in that we've got quite a bit of property that's under abatement. But our tax millage, or our SCV for this purpose, is $290 million in 1992. The same number, given some things that we've adjusted, and given other changes that have happened, both real growth and, and losses, is $308 million for 1993. Our losses were $8.4 million. Things that have happened as losses are reductions in personal property for depreciation, things of this nature, uh, garages being torn down, anything that might happen to burn, stuff like that, anybody tearing down a home. Those would be the type of losses. The new additions of $8.9 million are things like uh, buildings that were built as commercial buildings, uh, and Pat Norton's property, for instance, things like Greenberry Apartments, and things like uh, the condominiums of legacy estates. So the total assessed value for the year is $308 million. The SCP is $308 million. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Headley says we can take a 3% increase and we can take no more based on, the mil uh, based on the property that continues from year to year. They calculate that property by taking the 1992 total SCP, subtracting any of the losses, and comparing that to the 1993 SCP minus any of the additions. That those two numbers, when taken, the net numbers are supposed to be the same number. The only difference is price inflation. In other words, the sort of things the price increases we see from year to year. Multiplied by the inflation rate, and that calculation is called the 1993 millage reduction fraction, or what we call the Headley fraction. And, and Headley's nowhere in the law, but everybody knows what it is. We take that $290 million less the eight, eight, and by the way, our Gains and losses virtually offset each other. We only have a slight increase in property that wasn't under abatement of about $500,000. When we do this calculation, our heavy factor turns out to be 0.9692. Totally meaningless number, but we'll try and explain how it affects things in a minute. That is the heavy number we have to use. It's the first time in our history that it's been below one, and we've always had it below one in the past, or at one in the past. So just slide that down to the Next, we're going to talk about truth of assessing, which is the calculation that the county equalization director has to make sure that our assessments are at full value. And that number, when calculated, turns out to be one. We don't have a problem there. The final thing that we're going to deal with here is the truth in taxation calculation. This is very similar to the heavily calculation in that we're comparing the same numbers without the 3% increase. This, the purpose of this is so that when we apply a millage to the 1992, or 93, excuse me, the 1993 SEV, we get no more mills unless we advertise, unless this council takes some action, we get no more dollars out of the calculation than we would have the year before. And, um, all that is to say that if we charged $5.4 million last year, in 1992, we will get to $5.4 million this year. Everybody knows we need to charge more, and that's why we need to advertise this so-called increase in this event. I'm going to go back to, for just a second now to the heavy part of this calculation. This form is a request of the county <coughs> board of commissioners that is submitted every year. And we've not shown it to you in the past because it is a little confusing. But it does three things. It lists our original authority. It talks about the compound fractions that affect things. It calculates an allowable maximum millage. And then it states what millage below that or at that level that we wish to charge. There are several millages that we have had in the past, and one that's been added this year for your information so we can talk about it in, at other times. Our base operating millage was the object of the charter in 1960 that was originally 15 mills. Later on, the retirement millage or the pension millage was approved in 74 for one mill. In 85, the sanitation millage to go to the sanitation authority. 
the chair uh, was ready uh, <coughs> approved for 10 years in 87. A road millage was approved in no and a half for another 10 years. There is also under the authority of state law under the Act 164 of the Public Acts of 1877 as amended a one mill authority that we have never charged, but I'm just showing it to you here so that when we talk about it later on, we know that it's a millage that we could have charged in the past and never have. And finally, the garbage village that we have been charging for over six years now is, is under the authority of Act 298 of 1917. Up to now, our heavy fraction has always been one mill. There's a compound village fraction for 92 of one mill. The figure we showed you on the other page was 96.9692 mil, sorry, not mil, 0.9692 fraction. These two multiplied together get a compound reduction fraction of 0.9692 for 1993. This is our head leaf fraction for this year in total. It would also, we look at the state, uh, the truth of assessing calculation, which is one, but that doesn't affect. This number multiplied by our original authority is now the maximum amount we can charge. It's easiest to see here on the pension line where our original authority was one mil, the compound fraction is 0.9692, we can only charge 0.9692 mil. In all the other cases, uh, where it's easiest to see where we had one mil original authority, now 0.9692 for sanitation. Where we had one mil for library originally, 0.9692 for that as well. The other limitations are to the road millage, 1.4538, and to the garbage millage, 2.9076. Our total limitation that we could possibly charge under these millages is 21.807 mils. We're not proposing that. We're proposing something slightly less, and we do this because it's easier to explain to taxpayers and easier to talk about ourselves. <coughs> We've rounded some of these millages off to 14.53, 0.96, 0.48, 1.45, there will be no proposal for library at this time, but that will be something for you uh, council members to consider in the future. And we're recommending a garbage levy of 1.24, total millage of 18.66. We're still talking about a reduced millage from last year. That's the operating millage we're talking about. Again, 0.59 mils for debt. That could be whatever it needs to be. That's what the law allows us. That would be the total of 19.25 mils. This would be the form should you finally adopt this millage on the 18th. And that's the <coughs> that would be submitted by the mayor and the uh, clerk afterwards to the county and then uh, to the office. <coughs> However, we don't stop there. We have to look at truth and taxation now. And this slide, let's cover up the bottom portion of the country. <laughs> the heavy fraction allowed the 3% increase. That set an absolute ceiling. There's another ceiling that we have to talk about, and this one is the truth of taxation ceiling. We can exceed this ceiling. We cannot exceed heavy. Our millage rates for operating purposes are 18.90. Fraction for truth and taxation is 0.941. <laughs> that creates base millages in total of 17.7849 mil. That is an artificial seed. The reason for it, last year's SEV was $290 million. That generated $5.4 million in taxes from ad valorem millages. The new $308,000, $308 million worth of SEV, when multiplied by this number, would raise the same amount. Technically, $441, the same amount. We're recommending 18.66 mil. This is an increase of 0.8751 when compared to the truth and taxation number. Why is it an increase? Because when you multiply the 1866, times that 308, same 308 million dollars, that will raise the taxes that we need this year to operate 5.7 million dollars worth of taxes for an increase of approximately 270 thousand dollars. That increases approximately 4.9 percent. So in the notice, we're going to see this 4.9 percent number, we're going to see this increase. 
Have we seen these numbers before? Certainly we have. Every year that we've operated under this law, we've had various advertised increases throughout the years. And I took it back five years so you can see what happened here. In 1988, we had a similar advertised increase. And you saw those tax mortgages dropping. We'll go back to that slide in just a minute. We had an advertised increase of 0.69 mills, or yes, 0.69 mills in 88, 0.50 in 89, 0.70 in 90, 0.43 in 91. And now this year, there was nothing last year because of the freeze. We kept the mills the same, but that created no truth in taxation disclosure at that point in time. And this year, it will be 0.8751 mills. Mr. Mayor. Mr. I have, a, I have a question here. If you lower that. Yeah, the top part, sure. You know, caught my attention here. You're showing a sanitation millage, 1992 actual 0.48. You're also showing a 0.92 garbage. Yes. One's the incinerator and one's for garbage. This, this, this is garbage quality. Yeah. That was the debt for the sanitation authority when we approved that one mill increase. <laughs> We don't levy the whole mill. No, 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 I know we don't. There's no, orders, we wouldn't, and we never have. We never come close. But that's strictly for the incinerator and all the improvements yeah. that have been going right. on over right. there for right. the last five years. This, this millage expires in 1995, I believe it is, and the road millage expires in 1997. Okay, thank you. Ed, on that chart, BTRF, I know. What, what does actually Base tax reduction fraction. Okay, thank you. I understand what it is. I just wasn't sure what it called for. The enactment. That's that's on the worksheet. Okay. Okay. So then we come to the notice itself. This is this is prescribed uh, wording, and uh, I have a misspell or I have a double wording. Here. You say it's prescribed. It is prescribed by law. That's. What, what is prescribed? The fact that we must advertise an increase of 0.8751 yes. or the, so that language is not prescribed. No, we fact, must announce. In fact, the State Tax Commission has adopted it this as official language. You can vary from this slightly, but this is this. We can add to it also. We can add to it. Certainly. Yeah, but if you use this language, then you meet the requirements. Of the law. We use this language and additional language explaining to the taxpayer what's going on. But uh, in a that's nutshell, what you told us tonight. <laughs> Just an asterisk next to that uh, increase. <laughs> and uh, we, we have advertised this for several, several years. I haven't met anybody yet who's understood this notice yet. However, you, Ed, most people can understand increase of. <laughs> that's not hard to do. Yeah. Well, if you can follow it through to the result of the meeting, unfortunately, it's. You're suggesting, Mr. Mayor, uh, that we augment this advertisement by indicating that the proposed millage rate of 19.25 little asterisk down at the bottom there is lower yeah. than the millage rate of 1986. I, uh, I have no problem with the fact, obviously public hearings must be held, I believe in obviously truth and taxation, etc. I take exception to the fact that we must, uh, and we have some very learned people at this dais here and in the audience, uh, if I ask my friend out there, a graduate engineer, to read that thing, He's going to say that his taxes are going up 0.8751 when you read that. Mm -hmm. And we know it's not, but that goes out as a public notice of a property tax increase. I want to see something in this notice that explains exactly what we're talking about, that it is not a public, that it is not a, a tax increase over existing millage rates, which if you read that, that's what it tells us. Now, people that are schooled in assessing and other vagaries of public finance knows that's not what it says. But unfortunately, that's going to be published in the Wayne Eagle, not the Assessing Times, where people have this yeah, high... I think even people in the Assessing Times understand. So, so I... It, it, was, it was prescribed by legislatures as not going to say. But what... <laughs> enough said. What is prescribed? <laughs> that's my point. I, I don't buy this language as it is the way it's written. I, I need to know from you what is prescribed by law what must we, we have tell? We advertise this number, and we have to advertise this number, and we have to make the statement as to what happens with the uh, existing taxes if the millage rate is not increased in this manner. 
and so of course the time, the date, the place of the public Obviously. hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the state also prescribes the size of the pipe so that you can't bury it in the paper. The size of the notice, the size of the pipe. And a very small ad. Well, I would like to see the administration add to that. We have a lot of creative people on staff that can add to that an explanation that, that in fact our folks out there that are going to pay these taxes understands that it is in fact a, a property tax reduction of point whatever point two five we're going I from nine I mean that has to be included mm -hmm. in this, this, this public notice. I, I don't know that it's gonna make it any clear we'll try. We'll do our best and we'll and we'll do it. This this basic ad here is the same ad except of course the changing of the fiscal years and the and the dates um, from May eighteenth to whatever. <laughs> That's been run since 1988. I, yeah. I think we're in a different situation this year because of the tax free situation, because of Proposal A. I think a lot of people are going to read this a lot closer than they ever have in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to make sure it's clear that they're what we're really doing. Read any of these and end up scratching their head. They're just not, in a, in a wording of an ad, you just can't read it. Through. Well, we can, Mr. Rothfelder, I, uh, add some things, put a chart in showing the history of, of what our actual property tax levy has been. Um, I, I think we can make it a lot. We can explain to folks somehow that in the point eight seven five one increases a reduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so back to what we'd like you to approve. Will you approve nineteen point two five as your proposed millage rate? Will you um, <laughs> amend the time of the? Um, I just wanted to Public try hearing do from one more thing to show you geographically okay. what is uh, really involved here. This is a crude attempt in a graph to try and show you what we originally started from. Originally, this is supposed to be a line of 22 and a half more. That is our total <coughs> that we had as approved by the voters or by law. That got limited by Headley to the 21 mills. We had a truth in taxation limit here of 18 or 17.78 mills. All we're asking is to capture an additional amount within our authority limit of what uh, will generate some tax dollars for us in the future. This amount has gone away forever unless we have a heavily override at some time in the future, as the mayor pointed out. It. And that graphically tries to describe the things that are going on here. And in summary, to go back to our original chart at the very beginning. I think we got what, it. What we're asking for at this point is <laughs> three things. I want to hear this. We have three things we want you to do. We want you to change the meeting time from 7 to 8. We want you to approve 19.25 mills as your tentative millage rate. And we want you to approve that ad subject to us uh, adding in information in there to explain uh, the fact that the millage rate is lower than last year lower than it was in 1986 and uh, try and explain the reason why it looks like it's nine tenths of a mill higher. And, get well, and the poor city attorney would like, on oh, behalf of the clerk, separate that you make a separate motion, at least two. So move, so move, so move. Move the public hearing for May 18th at 8 o'clock. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Mr. City Manager. Same night. Yeah, we can have. It'll be the same night. We'll have a full house. That's better. Looks just open. Then the next motion. <laughs> and I, I, if you want to combine those two, that's okay with me. Uh, but uh, I think that now that you're clear about that, fine. I need the, your second motion regards to the 19.25 and and the advertising. The 19.25 and the council suggested that there be some augmentation to the notice put in the paper. So move. Moved, Support. supported. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Item 5I, three year contract for collection of delinquent personal property taxes. We'll ask you to extend the contract with uh, Andrew Perkovich. Indicate you had good experience with this. Uh, You've compared them with others, have you? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, Mr. Perkovich has been working for us as our delinquent personal property tax collector since 1986, uh, late part of 86, early part of 87. Uh, he is the only one I know of uh, 
out there that have Provide experience sure. of, yes, yes, of, of experience, prior work experience with the county, and as a personal property tax collector exclusively. Mr. Mayor. We recommend this, uh, uh, you know. Okay. Mr. Kelly. How much money has he saved us? Or how much has he... Well, it, it's very difficult to quantify, but Mr. Perkovich has been able to turn over cash in terms of collections and delinquent personal property tax in the city of Wayne. These taxes, unlike real property taxes, don't go downtown delinquent and subsequently uh, turned over by the county to us after they have their bond sale. These delinquent personal property taxes go delinquent until they are collected by the city, not by the county. And uh, uh, It's only personal property taxes. It's only mm -hmm. personal property taxes. Do you have a, a, any kind of a figure? Uh, Savings very difficult to oh, yeah, well, let's say let's say how much taxes. how much delinquent taxes has he been able to? Uh, well, the, Mr. Mr. Kelly, though, maybe the way to turn the question around so that um, Mr. Norwood can handle it is the issue here is that we've never seized any property. Mr. Perkovich has been able to work out arrangements with all of the delinquent property tax payers that have got them to get themselves current, wherein we have not had padlock buildings, seized property, auctions. Well, I understand that, but do, you know, don't we have a dollar amount? Well, we can find one for you, and uh, by calculating this going back to 80 cents. Well, no, just do it for the last year, you know, please. Well, the way you can quantify it, and there's very, it's very difficult to do so, but we always look at the end of the fiscal year to calculate the amount of uncollectible Tax. We haven't done this only for personal property tax, but there is a ratio between the uncollected amount and the amount we left. And that amount has remained very, very low uh, over the last six or seven years. I guess you can't even compare this to other cities because other cities' economies are different. Uh, the delinquency of personal property taxes runs with the economy. Business is bad, um, money is very difficult to get. Businesses are marginal, and therefore they're unable to pay their taxes. And therefore, it's difficult to compare this uh, particular. But I can come up with a ratio for you and tell you exactly how much is delinquent at March one, um, and that's the due date of taxes uh, to February twenty eighth uh, uh, of the prior of the next year. To tell you exactly what was collected in terms of what went uh, totally delinquent come up with some numbers for you at the next council meeting. How much do we pay uh, this gentleman for his services? I, I failed to see it. In accordance with the contract, uh, Councilman Kelly, we pay him the interest and collection fees on the taxes that are collected, that are owed at the time of collection. So the full tax amount is turned over to the each tax and jurisdiction, but we, we give him the fees. So. The full principal is turned over to the city. We in turn turn the principal over that's collected on city, uh, I'm sorry, on county and school monies to the appropriate jurisdictions. Okay. Move approval, Mr. Mayor. Part. Moved and supported. Any other discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item 5J, proclamation naming May 13th as Poppy Day in Wayne. Move approval. Been moved, Support. supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. There are seven board and commission minutes before you in the consent calendar. Move approval without exception. Uh, item F. Everything but item F. Item F. Yeah. Been moved to approve everything except item F. Support. Support. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item F uh, is concerned about the uh, two issues being cut from the uh, senior citizen newsletter. I was wondering what that amount would uh, would uh, be. You know, how much you say? In our proposed budget to you, Mr. Mayor, we're, we're recommending that the newsletter be printed quarterly rather than by month four times per year rather than six and times per year and the savings are I, I don't know the number off the top of my head but uh, we were attempting to uh, trim uh, some costs in that area so that we could continue some other um, uh, services for seniors um, the, uh, the uh, volume of information 
may not require it, but the postage uh, is paid. That was what I was concerned about. Yeah, the information postage. that's in that uh, newsletter is very good and right. beneficial, but right. I don't want to cut that. Right. We're attempting, we're attempting to cut back on the postage and handling. And uh, we have this Commission on Aging and the Senior Services staff will continue to put out the kind of articles to the seniors that they're interested in, tips on uh, what they are interested in hearing about. But uh, we are trying to hold down the money postage as that's been going up and some of our other costs have been going up and we're trying to live with 3%. Okay. The, and also they discussed the uh, Detroit News advertisement of uh, Medicare, transportation, cost of $5 per individual brochure. Have, has anybody taken a look at that? Is that a scam that's going on or is that just uh, some... Mr. Polis, can you help me with this? Back page there, top of the page. I think Mrs. Tucker was indicating to them that the same services that were being offered for that amount of money are provided to the police. Now that's my concern, Ted. I'd like, if necessary, to have our police department look at that. If somebody is scamming senior citizens, I want somebody arrested. I don't know if it was happening in our community, Mr. Okay. It, it, that's I think it was something that was brought to the Commission on Aging's attention through Mrs. Tucker. And she was indicating to them that that service is provided by us free. Uh, the point is, I think we need it yeah. publicized to, to, do that. to make sure that no, none of our seniors are, right. are taken in by this thing and make sure it gets wide distribution. So, and if, like I say, if somebody's breaking the law, uh, here in Detroit or wherever, the proper authority should be taking a look at it. And uh, the no turn on red signs, did we know where their problem was on that? It's a uh, second last paragraph. Then. I don't. I don't know. Of That's just a general plan. comment, man. I, 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 we should that. find out if the, if there's a particular area we ought to take a look at, if, or if it's just in general, uh, we may want to look for. It. Okay. The time of year. Uh, <coughs> um, if you know this meeting was held in April, the time of year where the salt and uh, the removal of snow has done some damage to uh, crosswalk markings right. in the public works department. You'll be getting into their annual program of, of uh, relining the crosswalks and repairing some of the signs. Um, if there are some intersections that we're having difficulty with, those will be referred to the police chief and to the traffic bureau or the jurisdiction of the Senate Very good. Anything else? Sir? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I just wanted to mention a thank you to the um, fire department and the police department in regard to the dramatic presentation that was put on uh, last Friday at Wayne Memorial. thought that was excellent. Operation Prom? Yes, the Operation Prom night. Um, if that didn't wake some kids up, I don't know what would. Um, it isn't just drunk driving that causes problems, too, though. It is problems of people not paying attention, period, to their driving. And uh, perhaps more of the community should uh, see this particular presentation than just the high school students. It's a job well done. I enjoyed it. We're going to be able to um, edit the tape, uh, Wayne, and put it on cable? We think so. we got a lot of footage in there. We'll be able to edit down a good program. Very good. And uh, that's the kind of thing that, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I know you would like to move uh, uh, to adjourn, but we'll uh, work with the uh, cable people relative to using our local programming funds as we promised at the last meeting, which we were uh, unable to be at. But uh, we'll work with our local programming account and, and put that into a form like the expensive night out take in judge and others did. This would be uh, appropriate for those pieces of those funds. Very good. We don't want to close the meeting until we mention <coughs> the art train. <laughs> We all have our T-shirts. So they got a giant one for me. It might fit. Would you like Debbie to tell you a little bit about the uh, program? And, uh, yep. Debbie, the could you make a few comments on it? Uh, here. Uh, as you know, our train is due to arrive in town on May 12th. Um, we will be hosting an opening reception that evening. Uh, we've dedicated uh, May 13th and 14th for group tours. At this point, we have already um, secured reservations from 42 groups, or being, uh, a majority of which are represent are representatives of the uh, schools in the Wayne Westland School District. Um, the 15th and 16th are days that are open for general public tours. 
Um, as you already know, um, the uh, exhibit theme this year is the Romance of Transportation, and it features artists' interpretation of the evolution in the industry over the course of the last 300 years. It's a very bold exhibit, uh, very well done. I'm sure um, that it will be well enjoyed, and we're quite fortunate to be one of the 50 uh, communities that were included in our train art itinerary for the 1992 tour. I'm sorry. 93. Three. <laughs> Very good. Three. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. As chairwoman of fundraising for Art Train, I want to say thank you. Um, I've gotten a very good response from the business community as well as individuals for funding for this particular uh, event. And you're still accepting oh, donations. I'm still accepting donations. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Okay. Motion is in order to adjourn. So move. Move. Support. Support. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Stand here.